Hello grade 12, this is Physical Science. My name is Gillian, and today we are going to consolidate the things we've learned about the electrochemical cell. Well, we call it electrochemistry, but the cell that we are particularly looking at is the electrolytic cell. So let's have a look and remind ourselves what we did last time. So if you look at the screen, we have uh, electrochemistry. Here we go, electrochemistry. We have uh, two types of cells. We have the galvanic cell and we have the electrolytic cell. The galvanic cell is the one that has the salt bridge uh, and it is a spontaneous reaction. Uh, so it does not need an external energy source. Um, the, electrical, the electricity, the electrical energy is um, formed by the uh, chemical potential energy within the reactions. So the half reactions here uh, will, uh, they're redox reactions, they will form electrons and if we place it, uh, those two electrodes onto an external circuit, we'll see that there will be a flow of electrons. So that's the galvanic cell. The electrolytic cell is the other way around. The electrolytic cell uh, how do we classify that? We classify it by saying that uh, electrical energy is converted into chemical potential energy. So the outside, the external energy source drives the reaction that happens over here. The things that are the same, we have electrodes, uh, we have uh, electrolytes, you could see the liquid here, the aqueous solution, we have electrolytes in both of them. Uh, the electrodes are called the anode and the cathode. We have definitely redox reactions in both that the, uh, the, there's an oxidation half reaction and that there is a reduction half reaction. There is a giving of electrons or loss of electrons. There's a taking of electrons. And so we can then classify the thing that is oxidized as the um, reducing agent and the substance that is reduced as the oxidizing agent. We are going to have a look, particularly today, at um, the plating, electroplating, and that falls under the chemistry of the electrolytic cells. So let's see. So grade 12, this question is asking us to use our knowledge of the electrolytic cell uh, and unpack what electroplating is. So electroplating is where we take um, a, a metal that is not very precious, um, but it's very useful, and we cover it with a very thin layer of a more expensive metal. So that's electroplating, where we paint on, in a way, um, a very thin layer of metal. So the question says, the diagram below shows a simplified electrolytic cell, so they tell us that it is about electrochemistry that can be used to plate a, oh, this is interesting, a plastic ring with nickel. Prior to electroplating, the ring is covered in a graphite layer. Right, so let's have a look at this diagram and think it through. So we have a nickel electrode. If you look here, here's the, in, the nickel electrode. We have an electrolyte which is nickel sulfate. So if nickel sulfate is in the aqueous state, it means it has dissociated in water and we get two ions, which is the nickel two plus ion and we get the sulfate ion, SO4 two minus. How did I know that nickel was two plus. Well, I know that the sulfate ion is always, that's the sulfate ion, always has a charge of two minus. So for the, the compound to be neutral, there has to be um, a two plus charge on the nickel. In other words, it's oxidation, it's unit oxidation number is two plus in this compound. Okay, so, that is our electrolyte. When we are plating, uh, we, we want to plate 
the object, in this case it is a, a ring, it could be something else, it could be a spoon or um, it could be a coin. Um, when we are plating with uh, the, the metal that we want, and in this case it is nickel, we need to have an electrode that is made of nickel. So that's the first thing. Okay, so we need to have an electrode that is made of nickel. The other thing that has to happen is we have to have an electrolyte that is made of the same substance that we want to coat um, or we want to paint um, our object. So the electrolyte needs to have also this nickel uh, in it. And so that would be the nickel 2 plus. Okay, the plastic ring is coated in graphite. Now that's an interesting thing that they tell us. I wonder why they tell us that. We will come to that later. Um, okay, so this is an electrolytic cell. How do I know that? It's got a battery on the outside, an external circuit. It is the thing that is providing the energy. So this is electrical energy converted to chemical potential energy energy. Let's see what is going on here. I have given you a standard reduction potentials table. Why am I giving this to you? Because I, I would like you to see how you can use this table in case you don't know what reactions are happening. We're dealing with nickel. So if I run my hand or my finger down this um, this table, I can pick up which iron I am using. It's not zinc, no chloride. What's that, chromium? No chromium. Nickel, nickel, there we go. There's nickel, there's nickel over there. And can you see that I have the nickel two plus iron on the left-hand side and nickel metal, the pure nickel on the right-hand side. So what is happening here to coat? Well, I want the nickel metal to be um, coated onto this ring. So I am wanting Ni0. I want it to be solid. Okay, I want that. What do um, I have in solution and what will happen at the um, nickel electrode? I will need to have a presence of the nickel 2 plus iron to be able to form that solid nickel. What questions are they asking me here? Ah, oh, this is, these are good marks. You need to know this. Define the term electrolyte. So, a substance of which the aqueous solution contains ions, or you can say a substance that dissolves in water to give a solution that conducts electricity. You choose which definition you want to use. Question two, which one, give one reason why the plastic ring must be covered with graphite prior to electroplating. Very good question. And this draws on your knowledge of electricity. Plastic is an insulator it cannot conduct electricity. What is imperative in this electrolytic cell is that the battery supplies electrons or takes electrons away to create a positive um, uh, electrode or a negative electrode. And that's what drives the half reactions. So plastic is never going to do it. You're not going to get anything happening. So the plastic is then coated in graphite. Graphite is a conductor. It conducts um, electricity. And so the electrons can then move through that graphite. And on the surface of the graphite, a reaction is going to happen. So one reason, well, the plastic is an insulator. The graphite is the one that conducts the electricity. Write down the following, the half reaction that takes, takes place at the plastic ring. So that's over here. And I showed you that, um, let's go back to it. The, this, uh, 
this potentials table, uh, the standard reduction potentials table, and this was the reaction that we were looking at. So if we are looking at this one, we are going to read it from left, oh, that's funny, left to right. That's how we're going to read it. And you can see that we are adding a plus two electrons. So the nickel two plus ion is going to take on the two electrons to form the nickel um, solid, which is what we want. And so how are we going to write it? We're going to write it exactly as it says in that table. So the nickel two plus ion, which is in its aqueous form, is going to take on two electrons to form nickel solid, okay? And we've got a zero oxidation number there. The reaction that's happening at this nickel electrode, the nickel is going to move into solution as a nickel two plus ion. So we've got nickel, which is in the solid form. It has an oxidation number, a unit oxidation number of zero. It is going to give up two electrons and it's going to form the nickel um, two plus ion in aqueous and it's giving up two electrons. Okay, so that's the reaction that happens at this electrode. The formula or name of the reducing agent Mm. So, what is the reducing agent? The reducing agent is that substance which is oxidized. It is oxidized. It aids reduction. How does it aid um, reduction? It aids reduction by giving electrons. So, which substance is oxidized in this case? Let's have a look. If we look at our first equation that we had to write down the half reaction we see that nickel 2 plus is changed by uh, taking on electrons to nickel 0. That is becoming more negative, the oxidation number is reducing, that is not oxidation. So it has to be this one here. Okay, nickel 0 on the uh, nickel plate, um, it is the solid, is moving into solution, how is it doing that? Uh, it is forming the nickel 2 plus ion and giving two electrons away. Yes, that oxidation number is becoming more positive. It is increasing. And so which substance is going to be the reducing agent? It is going to be nickel. The solid nickel, that is um, the formula or the name of the reducing agent and give a reason for your answer. The nickel uh, electrode... Uh, what does it do? It, um, it gives electrons away and it moves from an oxidation number of, let's just write this down, oxidation number of uh, zero, whoops, of zero to an oxidation number of, let me put the zero back in there, um, oxidation number, let's write that all out. That's not appropriate in an exam. Uh, oxidation number of two plus. Okay, so there's our reason. Next question. Which electrode, the carbon or the nickel, is the cathode? Ah, oh, what is cathode? Remember, red cat, red cat. So reduction happens at the cathode. Which one is our reduction reaction? We're going to have a quick look here again. Which one is our reduction? It is this here, nickel 2 plus forming nickel uh, solid. And that is happening at the ring. So our answer for that question is, it is the, um, the ring and it is the graphite, right? So it's the graphite. It is the graphite ring. What would our a reason for the answer be? It would be that the reduction reaction is happening at this 
point at this electrode and we can even write the reduction reaction which is nickel 2 plus aqueous and it gains two electrons and it forms the nickel solid. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. The nickel electrode is now replaced with a carbon rod. Okay, so this is now replaced with carbon so um, or graphite. Let's just put here graphite or carbon. What is going to happen? How will the concentration of the electrolyte change during electroplating? So our electrolyte, remember, is Ni2 plus plus SO42 minus. That's the electrolyte. What's going to happen? Well, no longer is there a supply of nickel 2 plus ions from this electrode because the nickel is gone. And so the nickel 2 plus ions from solution um, are going to be deposited onto that plastic ring. And that's covered in graphite. So what happens? Right only increase, decrease, or no change? Well, it's going to decrease. It's going to decrease. And why? We've just given you that answer. Because the electrode, the nickel electrode, is no longer supplying nickel 2 plus ions. And so the nickel 2 plus ions will come out of solution and um, carry on that electroplating reaction. Right, Great Trails, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you in the next lesson. Welcome back grade 12s. We are busy with the electrolytic cell, consolidating what we have learned in big ideas. Okay, so we have to do uh, electro refining. So electro refining is where we take an impure metal and we put it into an electrolytic cell as an electrode and the reaction happens and we end up purifying that metal. All the impurities drop down to the bottom of the container and we end up with a, um, an increase in mass of the pure metal. So let's have a look at this question. The simplified diagram below represents an electrochemical cell used for the purification of copper. So we have here, what is a DC source? So that is a very good indicator that this is an, an electrolytic cell because in an electrolytic cell, we have got an external energy source. We have got electrical energy being converted into chemical potential energy. So that tells us what kind of uh, cell we are dealing with. Now we have got electrode B and it tells us that there is impure copper there. So you can see that big lump of impure copper. There is definitely an electrolyte. And electrode A is where the copper is going to be deposited. So what happens in all this is that um, the copper is going to come out of solution and it is then going to be deposited on that electrode um, and all the bits that we don't want then fall down to the bottom of the container. Let's see what they're going to ask us. So define the term electrolysis. Hmm, this is one that you do need to know off by heart. Electrolysis is a chemical process. So that is the difference when we're talking about, um, when we're trying to define an electrolytic cell and electrolysis. They sound the same, but uh, electrolysis has to have the word chemical process in it somewhere. What about um, the electrolytic cell and electrolysis? Well, it is the change of electrical energy into chemical potential energy. So here we go. Electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. There are a number of other options that you could write down. Uh, I like this first one because it really is a, a very good uh, definition and an understanding of what is happening in the electrolytic cell via electrolysis. The next question says, give a reason why a direct 
current is used in this experiment. Now think back to electricity. A direct current means that there is a continual flow of electrons in the same direction. If we've got AC current, it means that the electrons are moving in one direction and then in the other. One direction and then in the other. Can you imagine what's going to be happening to these um, ions um, in this chemical reaction if the electrodes keep on swapping around their, uh, their charge? These electrons these uh, chemicals, these ions, are going to be so confused, they're going to be moving to the one electrode and then moving to the other, and then moving to the one electrode and then moving to the other. It's going to be a disaster. So you have to have direct current so that you can get a continual supply of electrons and so that you can form a really good product. So. There are a number of ways of saying this. The first way you could say is to keep the polarity of the electrodes the same. Okay, You could say we are going to try and stop the anode and the cathode from keep on swapping because that's what would happen. The anode and the cathode would swap around because the charge on them is swapping around and so the different reactions would have to swap around. The half reactions would have to swap around. You could also say something like this, that uh, the direct current provides one way flow of electrons, um, ensuring that the same chemical reaction happens at each electrode. And in time, you would then get the, the product that you are wanting, which is the purification of this copper metal. Write down the half reaction that takes place at electrode A. Okay, so there's electrode A. What is electroplating? Electroplating is, sorry, not electroplating, um, electrorefining. It is taking this piece of impure copper and breaking it down. So the copper will become copper 2 plus in um, solution and the impurities will fall down to the bottom. What is going to happen to those copper 2 plus ions? They need to form a layer of copper on this electrode. So you can see there that the pure copper will be formed on this electrode. And so electrode A will get heavier and heavier. It will be greater in mass. To form the copper on this electrode, the copper 2 plus ions are going to have to take on two electrons to form pure copper. Here's the equation. You have seen this one before. I'll write it down for you. Copper 2 plus, okay, an aqueous solution so they are ions, they will accept two electrons, they take on two electrons to form copper, which is a solid. And it is um, a, a neutral, pure substance, and its oxidation number is going to be zero. So that is what we're actually wanting to do. We're wanting to make this pure copper. Pure copper forms on the other electrode. It forms on the, on the electrode that um, uh, is not impure copper. So that we break down this one and we build up this one here. We build it up. So that is the half reaction that is taking place at electrode A. Due to small amounts of zinc impurities in the impure copper, the electrolyte becomes contaminated with zinc ions. So they're telling us that this um, impure sample has got zinc in it, and so it becomes contaminated. Refer to the standard reduction potentials table to explain why the presence of zinc 2 plus ions will not influence the purity of the copper obtained during this process. So let's pull up our, um, our table over here. Remember our table 
is a, a group of redox reactions that has been ordered so that we can use it nicely. And the 4B table, which is the one that I am using, uh, is ordered from the strength of really strong reducing agents at the top down to the bottom where it is the weakest reducing agents. The 4A table is flipped around. I don't particularly like using that. I'm using the 4B table. You need to choose which one you're going to use. The double arrow is telling us that depending on what a substance is reacting with, it can either be oxidized or it can be reduced. We don't write the double arrow when we're writing the half reactions because that's not what it is. We, it's either going to be an oxidation reaction or it's going to be a reduction reaction. If it's oxidation reaction, we read it from right to left. So here we go, right to left. Okay, that is the oxidation reaction, half reaction, and the reduction half reaction we read from left to right, and then we write it like that. Okay, so that is the red reduction reaction. Okay, so using this table is, is really important. You need to know how to use it. So let's have a look at these two reactions. They're telling us that there are now zinc ions in the electrolyte. Is that going to affect this process? If we look here, we can see that uh, our reducing um, a reaction, our reduction reaction of zinc 2 plus, I've highlighted it for you, that's what we start off with. It f the, the assumption is that it's going to form the pure zinc metal, okay? And I've highlighted its E0 value as well. Now look at the copper. So copper 2 plus ions are there and they react with two electrons. They take on two electrons to form the pure copper. And there is its, um, ox its E0 value. Now, if we look on this table, we know that um, if we go from the bottom to the top, it's going to be increasing strength in reducing agent which means that the other way around, this way is going to be increasing strength in oxidation. Um, uh, yes, an oxidizing agent. So copper is the stronger oxidizing agent. Can you see there? Copper's at the bottom. It is below the zinc. And so copper 2 plus is a stronger oxidizing agent than the zinc two plus, and so nothing is going to happen. The, um, the zinc is not going to affect this reaction because the copper two plus is a stronger oxidizing agent. It's definitely going to be reduced, okay? An oxidizing agent means that the substance is being uh, reduced itself. So that is going to drive this reaction because the zinc two plus is not strong enough the copper 2 plus will form the copper and the zinc will not interfere in this reaction. Right, grade 12s, let's have a look at our overall application of this electrolytic cell. So we have um, discussed electroplating. We have discussed now the electro refining. In the big ideas uh, lesson, we had a look at the decomposition of copper to chloride. And so the one that is left out that we haven't had time to look at is the chloralkali electrolysis. I would uh, strongly recommend that you go and have a look at uh, the videos that are going to be put out on uh, the MTN uh, online school platform. And there is a particular video that is called a revision of electrochemistry. It is a brilliant summary. Get your pen and paper, work through all the examples that they put up there, and that will give you a very good grounding and preparation for your exams. Right, grade 12s, have a good one. We'll see you next time.